welcome to the news. I don't know what to call this. I mean, you know, I've done the FAA reorgan real reauthorization video, uh, but I need a title for the general newsy videos that I'm doing because a lot of people seem to like them. And I try to keep people informed because we need to know what's going on. And the news sounds a bit boring, doesn't it? And I can't call it drone news because it's about model aircraft as well. And I, you know, we all know there's a distinction. Um, so I don't know, what shall I call it? Sub 400 news, I don't know. But what's happened since my last little bit of a thing, aside from the reauthorization? Well, let me go through the things that have happened here. Right, first of all, in Australia, Australia, it's a little island off the coast of New Zealand. They are looking at changing some of the rules, some of the rules mainly focused on commercial drone operations, but it, some of the changes will affect model flying. They're to do with things like distance you can fly from an airport and so forth. Um, so you need to, if you're in Australia, you need to go and have a look at that. I'll put a link in the description. And one thing, links in the description. I have found to my cost that if you put links in the description that take people away from YouTube, your videos don't get promoted. They don't get promoted. It's best just not to put any links because then YouTube says, oh, we'll show this video because it's not trying to lure people away from our platform. Uh, it really compromises the value of YouTube as a method of disseminating information. If you can't link to other sites without being pushed right down the queue in terms of promotion, but I'm taking the hit for you guys. Yes, I'm, uh, there'll be links in the description about some of the stuff I'm talking about. So go and have a look. The survey in Australia, go and fill out the survey form. Tell them what you think. If you don't tell them what you think, you can't complain when things don't go your way. Right, what else? Well, here in New Zealand, interesting news. There's a company in the South Island of New Zealand wants to set up a drone testing area. Now, they mapped out some airspace and said, you know, there's not many people use this airspace. There's not much recreational flying around here. We would like to use this airspace to test our drones for beyond visual line of sight flying. And so they made an application to the Civil Aviation Authority and there was a general consultation and regulated aviators, manned aviators around the area just blew their top. Apparently there was a meeting where it almost came to punches, you know, a them and us kind of situation. The pilots did not want drones in their airspace. Basically, that's it. And you might think, well, that's a bit bloody backward, isn't it? But I look at the company that wanted the airspace for drones and I say, what were you thinking? I mean, it's not far from an airport. Duh. Um, and they wanted to go up to 8,000 feet. Why? You can fly beyond visual line of sight at 399 feet. So why do you need to go to 8,000 feet? What can you do at 8,000 feet that you can't do at 399 feet? If this company has said, well, we're prepared to give that vertical separation, I don't think that have got as much kickback from the private pilot or the, the, the man pilot community. So I think they really didn't think this through properly. They should have, you know, they should have really done their homework and I don't think they did. So it's understandable that there's a huge kickback from the manned aviation community there, even though it's a relatively lightly used piece of airspace. People, you have to think ahead, people have to think ahead. Now, I noticed also today that there was the first reported instance of a drone colliding with a balloon, a hot air balloon. Hmm, I've seen plenty of videos of this happening before. It has happened before. But apparently a drone hit a balloon, broke the props off and got tangled in the wires or in the cables from the balloon. And it was reported to the NTSB. And of course, the media coverage I've seen is, is not too bad, actually. But they do say, you know, all oh, tragedy, tragedy, people could have died. All the usual stuff. And I mean, what idiot flies their drone near a hot air balloon. I would never do that. There are clowns out there. There are clowns everywhere, right? As I pointed out in one of my earlier videos, GA community, buzzing people on a beach, drone community, flying drones into balloons. I mean, there's always idiots. You can't, you can't legislate against idiocy. So that's something that's worth uh, remembering. So stay away from hot air balloons, please. Please don't give us all a bad name. And Another thing that I noticed was a test. Now, we've all talked about the lack of testing with drones and aircraft. You know, oh, a drone will bring down an aircraft. And the, the only other test I've actually seen was where they took all the heavy bits of a drone, stuck them in a cannon and fired them like a bullet at the windscreen of, a, of an airliner, which was really not particularly representative of what would happen if a drone and an airliner collided. And of course, they won't release the full details of that test because it would make them look stupid. So what good is a test where it's all fudged like that? No good at all. Yet, you know, authorities are looking at that and going, oh, scientific evidence. Yet everyone forgets the George Mason University test that says, or, or, or analysis that said there's the risk of serious injury or death once every 400 years at the current rate of drone and manned aircraft use. Every 400 years, there's one chance of a collision causing death or injury. So no one, no one ever bothers about that one. It's a scientific study that's done using bird strike data, and it's really, really good, but well, because it doesn't fit the agenda, it's ignored by regulators, the media, and the manned aviation community. All right, anyway, but so they did a test. It was the University of Dayton Research Institute's Impact Physics Lab did the test. They got a Mooney M20 
and they, well, the wing from a Mooney M20, and they fired a Phantom at it at 238 miles an hour. What size battery were they using in that thing? Anyway, they fired it and it went through the leading edge of the wing and damaged the spar. Okay? And so I have to say, yes, drones are dangerous. If you have a collision between a drone and a manned aircraft, there is all sorts of potential for danger involved in that. Only an idiot would deny that. And we're never going to deny that. We're looking at the facts, scientific. Yes, the wing was damaged, leading edge was obliterated, spar was damaged. The plane probably wouldn't have crashed because, you know, if you to start a pull in loops, it might have crashed, but I don't think the spar was compromised to the point where it would have failed under normal flight loads. So there the probably wouldn't have been a death involved or even an injury. The aircraft should have been able to land properly. But I, I looked at this and I thought, why do they use a Mooney M20? I mean, it's not the most popular manned aircraft in America. In fact, I looked up the figures, there are 6,748 registered Mooney M20s in America. If you compare that with the number of Cessna 172s, there have been 44,000 Cessna 172s manufactured um, in America, and a great many of those are still flying. Why didn't they use a Cessna, a more common aircraft? Why did they use this rather esoteric Mooney? Well, it's down to numbers. The Mooney has a cruise speed of 220 knots. So they can fire a drone at it at 238 and say, this is indicative of a drone hitting a manned aircraft. If they'd used the Cessna 172, they could have only fired the drone at 140 miles an hour. And so the damage would have been much, much less. So if you are trying to do a study which shows the worst case, then the University of Dayton Research Institute's impact physics labs have done the thing they wanted to do. They've chosen the worst case scenario. They're one of the fastest manned piston-powered GA aircraft. They've used that as their target. I would have liked to have seen the test on a more common aircraft because the, the chances of hitting a more common aircraft are obviously higher than hitting a less common aircraft. But, okay, they've done it. Nobody died. Nobody would have died, I don't think. And it's interesting, the damage is quite significant. But then I went onto YouTube and started looking for bird strike videos. And there are some videos which I will put links to in the description showing some amazing bird damage from, or damage from bird strike. So yes, drones pose a threat to manned aircraft, as do birds. The difference is that every year, according to the statistics I read online, 400 million US dollars worth of damage is done by bird strikes. And you compare that to the damage done by drones, and you'll see that if we do a risk analysis, a risk analysis, then the risk posed by drones is like, you'd need a microscope to see it. The risk posed by birds is the elephant in the room. So why do we worry so much about the little risks when we are not really doing much to address the big risks? And man, bird strike danger is a real, just ask Sully, the guy that landed the, the jet in the Hudson River, what bird strike risk is like. It's huge. Um, lots of people could have died then. No one's going to die from a drone hitting the wing of a Mooney M20. There you go. So that's about it. I think that's all I had today for you to look at, um, to bring to your attention. And if you haven't seen my video on the FAA reauthorization bill, which is passed, then go and watch it. And if you've got anything you'd like me to address on these videos, then please mention it in the comments below. And if you've got something to say about what I have presented, again, rush to the comments section and fill it with your prose, and I shall per peruse it and comment, reply if necessary. In the meantime, thank you for watching. Thank you to my Patreon supporters, who are the people who keep this all going, because YouTube sucks, and they've demonetized the video I did about flying below 400 feet and and because I put links to news stories they, they down rank my videos but I'm not giving up I I would really like to be in a situation where I tell YouTube to stick their their re ad revenues right up where the Sun doesn't shine and focus solely on patreon as my support mechanism patreon seem to have been pretty straight up YouTube changes the rules at every drop of the hat and they seem to be inflicting their idea of what's right on everybody that's not the way to create a, a, a platform where people can voice honest opinions and bring the news to you. There you go. I wonder if YouTube or Google does drone, Google's in the drone delivery business. I see where this has come from. Conspiracy theory. Never mind. That's it. Got to go. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.